queens of Europe. Jadwiga, the female king of Poland. Jadwiga of Poland was crowned at the age of 10. She grew wise beyond her years and was forced to make a difficult decision about who to marry. Though she reigned for only 15 years, she did a great deal of good and is considered one of the greatest monarchs in Polish history. Jadwiga, or Hedwig as she is known in German, was born in 1373 or 74. She was the youngest of three children, all daughters of King Louis I of Hungary and Poland, and Elizabeth of Bosnia. Jadwiga was named for her distant ancestor, St. Hedwig of Zelesia, who was greatly exalted at the time. As King Louis had no sons, he championed the rights of his daughters to succeed him, and made his nobles swear oaths of loyalty to them. Therefore, the three heiresses of great expectation became particularly attractive brides. The plan was for the eldest Catherine to inherit Hungary, the second Mary, Poland, and since there was nothing left for the youngest, Jadwiga would be part of a powerful marriage alliance with the Austrian Habsburg family who ruled the Holy Roman Empire. When she was a mere toddler, Jadwiga was betrothed to William of Habsburg, eldest son of Leopold III, Duke of Austria. When the princess was five, her sponsalia de futuro, or provisional marriage, to the eight-year-old William was celebrated, and it was promised that the children would consummate their marriage as soon as they reached maturity. Later that year, Jadwiga's eldest sister Catherine died at the age of seven. This made second sister Mary the heir to all. She was betrothed to Prince Sigismund of Luxembourg, and her father forced the Polish lords to swear loyalty to him as their future king. Five years later, King Louis died at the age of 56, and 11-year-old Mary was crowned King of Hungary, as there was no provision for a queen to be ruler. Her betrothed, Sigismund, was away in Poland on military campaign to quash a rebellion, and was not present at the coronation. But as soon as he heard the news, he began to make his way back to the Hungarian capital of Buda, demanding oaths of loyalty along the way. Mary's quick-witted mother, Elizabeth, was made regent for her daughter. She understood that the Hungarian people had no desire to be ruled by her daughter's foreign fiancé, and she knew that when he arrived, he would take power out of her hands. So she released the nobles from the vows they had been forced into by her husband, and instead demanded that they vow loyalty to her daughters, which they did. But the Polish nobles were a different matter. They were weary of the personal union between Poland and Hungary, and didn't believe a ruler living in Buda could give priority to the needs of the Kingdom of Poland. They demanded that their new king, Mary, move to Poland or they would elect their own ruler to replace her. Conveniently, Elizabeth did have two daughters, so she decided that her elder daughter Mary would remain in Hungary as monarch, and her younger daughter Jadwiga would travel to Poland to rule there. However, she was hesitant to send eight-year-old Jadwiga across the Carpathian Mountains without her, so she made excuses to delay her arrival. The Polish lords began to squabble and fight over other possible candidates for the throne. One powerful lord tried to enter the Polish capital of Kraków in order to seize the throne, but the people of the city barred the gates to him. Another demanded to be crowned king, but the archbishop refused to place the crown on his head. And everyone could agree that they did not want Prince Sigismund of Luxembourg as their king, as he and his army were still marching around southern Poland, raiding and pillaging small villages. After nearly two years of waiting and infighting, the General Assembly of Poland sent the Dowager Queen an ultimatum, either deliver their new monarch in two months or they would elect one themselves. Elizabeth could no longer delay and had to send her 10-year-old daughter across the mountains to take the throne. On October 16, 1384, Jadwiga arrived in Kraków and was crowned before a massive cheering crowd of both high and low-born people who greeted her with great affection. She was proclaimed King of Poland, though historians debate if this was to distinguish her as a regnant rather than a queen consort, or to block any future husband she might take from claiming the title of king himself. Either way, aside from the legend of Queen Wanda of the 8th century, Jadwiga was the first female ever to rule over Poland. 
Jadwiga had a handful of trusted advisors picked for her by her mother to help her rule her new kingdom. But the bright, precocious, and exceptionally tall girl king quickly matured into her new role. She had an abundance of charm and kindness, which further endeared her to the court and her people. But as much as they adored their new ruler, they weren't keen to have her fiancé, William of Habsburg, come in and take over. They felt that the 14-year-old's Austrian kinsman could not or would not protect Poland's interests against its powerful neighbors, so they instead recommended that Jadwiga marry Duke Jugala of Lithuania. Jadwiga was not fond of this proposal. She liked William and was keen to marry him. He was also only a few years older than her, while Jugala was 35. Jugala was also a pagan who worshipped the old gods of the Baltic region. Jadwiga was a faithful Christian and was anguished at the thought of marrying a heathen. Jugala sent envoys to Jadwiga to ask for her hand in marriage, but she delayed, saying that she must wait for the advice of her mother. Meanwhile, William's father, King Leopold, reminded everyone that the marriage between his son and Jadwiga had already been sealed in the eyes of God, and that they need only consummate their union for it to be legally binding. 14-year-old William set out for Krakow so that he could sleep with his 11-year-old wife and cement their union. Accounts vary as to whether or not the young couple actually got together. The romantic legend is that Polish nobles barred the castle gates to William, and Jadwiga took an axe and tried to break down the door in order to get to her husband. Some accounts state that William did enter Jadwiga's bedchamber one night, but was later dragged out by Polish nobles, who then tried to murder him. Yet another chronicler records that everyone knew Jadwiga and William had shared a bed for a fortnight. But whether or not the very young lovers actually consummated their marriage, in the end, William was forced out of the country by the Polish nobility. Duke Jugaila of Lithuania smoothed things over with his potential bride by offering that he and his kinsmen would convert to Catholicism if she would agree to marry him. He would also support any of his countrymen who wished to do the same. At the time, most Lithuanians were pagan, so this was a big opportunity to spread Christianity. Jugaila also offered 200,000 florins in compensation to the jilted William of Habsburg, who refused the gift and instead recruited the Teutonic Knights to invade Lithuania. The Teutonic Knights were a Germanic religious and military order which aided pilgrims to the Holy Land and established hospitals. They weren't particularly happy about a pagan potentially marrying the monarch of Poland. A distraught Jadwiga went to the Bishop of Krakow to ask his advice about whether or not she should accept Jugaila's proposal. The bishop advised her that marrying the Lithuanian and therefore bringing Christianity to his people would be a priceless offering for the Christianization of Europe. According to legend, Jadwiga prayed before a black crucifix, and the figure of Christ on the cross spoke to her and said that she should indeed marry Jugaila. And so she accepted her suitor, who came to Krakow, where he was baptized and given the Christian name Władysław after a previous king of Poland. He requested that Jadwiga's mother Elizabeth adopt him as her own son so that he would have a direct claim on the Polish throne, just in case Jadwiga should die. Three days later, 35-year-old Władysław Jugaila married 12-year-old Jadwiga and he was declared king and lord of Poland. From then on, the couple ruled as co-monarchs in a personal union between the kingdoms of Poland and Lithuania. The two nations would be united under one crown for the next 400 years. But Jadwiga didn't simply hand over power to her husband. She remained the primary monarch of Poland and Jugaila the primary in Lithuania. Despite their age difference and the fact that they did not speak a common language at first, the newlyweds got along fairly well, and over time it developed a deep attachment and respect for one another. They traveled around Poland together to appease the local lords who were still hostile to Jugaila. On their journey, Jadwiga gave generously to the poor. Pope Urban VI sent a representative to investigate the unusual marriage, and he proclaimed the union legal in the eyes of the church. But the Teutonic Knights weren't satisfied. 
they still wanted William of Habsburg as king and began a propaganda campaign slandering Yogaila. William beseeched the Pope that he was Jadwiga's rightful husband and the rightful king as their marriage had indeed been consummated. The Pope rejected William's petition as he had already recognized the validity of the marriage and of course his holiness could not admit to having been wrong. But this was not enough to stop the protests of William and the Teutonic Knights. Jadwiga was finally forced to make a public oath before all the lords of Poland that she had come to Jogaila a virgin and had only ever slept with him. They accepted her oath and swore loyalty to Jogaila, soundly rejecting William. Meanwhile in Hungary, things were not going well for Jadwiga's mother Elizabeth and sister Mary. King Charles III of Naples had invaded and forced Mary off the throne. Elizabeth made an offer of peace and support to Charles and invited him to meet her in her apartments. When Charles arrived, she had him stabbed to death by her servants. With her daughter back on the throne, Elizabeth breathed a sigh of relief, but she recognized the dangerous position they were in, so invited Mary's betrothed, Sigismund of Luxembourg, to come to Hungary, marry Mary, and become her co-ruler. While the mother and daughter were on their way to meet Sigismund, they were ambushed by King Charles's widow, Margaret of Durazzo. Mother and daughter were imprisoned, and Elizabeth pleaded with Margaret that Charles's murder had been all her own doing. She begged Margaret to spare her daughter's life. The vengeful widow showed mercy to Mary, but not to Elizabeth, who was strangled in front of her daughter. Sigismund finally arrived five months later and defeated Margaret's forces. He set his fiance free and had Elizabeth's body exhumed from the secret grave she'd been laid in and given the funeral of a queen. Sigismund officially took Mary as his bride and took all of her political power as well. Though they were technically co-rulers, they were nowhere near equals as Jadwiga and Jogaila were. Sigismund wasn't much of a fan of his new ex-pagan brother-in-law and began negotiations with the still salty Teutonic Knights to invade Poland and divide it between them. The two royal sisters, Jadwiga and Mary, now in their late teens, met for the first time in nearly a decade in an attempt to smooth things over between their two countries. Sigismund, spoiling for a fight, turned his attentions to Moldovia and then Wallachia. He invaded both and forced their rulers to swear loyalty to him. But as soon as he left, they both turned around and promised to support Jadwiga and Jogaila against Sigismund. In 1395, Mary was thrown from her horse and died. Even more tragically, she was pregnant at the time. And since Jadwiga was her sister's legal heir, this meant that she was now the rightful ruler of Hungary. Jadwiga gathered support for her claim to the throne from some of the Hungarian nobles. This new leverage put her in a strong position to negotiate with Sigismund, and eventually an agreement was reached. Jadwiga took the title heir to Hungary, but otherwise backed down from her claim and allowed Sigismund to retain control of Hungary, and he backed down from his plans to take over Poland. What's more, the two kings agreed to join forces against the threat of the Teutonic Knights, and together they were able to get them to agree to a peace treaty. Jadwiga was passionate about aiding the poor and spent much of her personal wealth on founding hospitals. She was deeply religious and also founded dozens of churches, and promoted the use of the Polish language in church services and hymns, and the translation of the Bible, so that her people could hear and read the Word of God in their own tongue. She patronized many writers and artists, and sponsored the restoration of Krakow University, which was partly funded by the sale of her jewelry. At the age of 25, Jadwiga became pregnant for the first time, and she and Jogaila were overjoyed. Lavish gifts, including a silver cradle, were sent for the new baby from monarchs around Europe. Jadwiga gave birth to a daughter, possibly prematurely, whom she named Elizabeth Bonifacia, after her mother and the new pope, Boniface IX. But the baby only lived for three weeks. Jadwiga, too, was in ill health after the delivery, most likely suffering from childbed fever. 
The high and low throughout Poland prayed for the recovery of their monarch, who was the spiritual mother of the poor, weak, and ill. But the death of her daughter weakened Jadwiga's spirit. Four days after the baby passed, Jadwiga embraced her beloved husband for the final time. She advised him to marry Anne of Sili, granddaughter of Casimir the Great, a former king of Poland, as this marriage would strengthen his claim to remain on the Polish throne and prevent the nobles from fighting over it. Then Jadwiga, Poland's first female king, died on July 17, 1399. Jadwiga and her infant daughter were buried together in Wawel Cathedral. Heartbroken, Jogaila left Poland and returned to Lithuania. But the Polish lords followed him there and asked him to return as their king. He agreed to marry Anne of Sili and ruled over Poland for a further 35 years during a golden age in the nation's history. Jadwiga has long been venerated in Poland as one of their greatest rulers and the most Christian queen. In 1997, Pope John Paul II, himself a Pole, canonized Jadwiga as a saint. Her feast day is February 28th. She is credited with three miracles in her lifetime, seeing a vision of Christ speaking to her when he advised her to marry Jogaila and bring Christianity to Lithuania bringing a drowned boy back to life by covering him with a cloak, and leaving a footprint in already set plaster after giving a poor stonemason a gold buckle from her shoe to feed his hungry family. The venerated footprint is still visible and lovingly preserved in the Church of the Visitation of the Blessed Virgin Mary in Krakow. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, comment your thoughts, and check out my other royal history videos. If you really want to help, please consider supporting me on Patreon. A link is in the description. Thank you for watching.